This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Is life sometimes monotonous, drab, uninteresting the same day after day? You feel as though you were in a rut? Do you ever wonder if there's going to be any true happiness in life for you? Do the days sometimes stretch without hope into a dark, uncertain future? If you ever do become discouraged in that fashion, simply remember this tremendous truth. The God who created this universe created you to be happy, and God loves you infinitely. It is God's will that you live a full and useful life. Declared Jesus, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Again and again, he said, be of good cheer, fear not, be not anxious. That means more than the humdrum routine of working and eating and sleeping and nothing else. It means a life of beauty and happiness and joy and meaning. Jesus himself was a radiantly happy individual. There was a serene joy within his heart every hour of his ministry and his life. Often he spoke of that joy. He knew this living love of God. And God created every human being to be happy in the sense of fulfillment, of knowing who you are and why on earth you're here on earth, to discover that there's a resounding, radiant purpose for your being alive. You can know that purpose for you. Jesus began his most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, talking about happiness, which is translated blessedness. Blessed are, happy are, the pure in heart, happy are the peacemakers. He was talking about spiritual values. The secret of happiness is so simple that many can hardly believe it. The secret is simply love, love for God and love for people. Jesus of Nazareth's two great commandments were, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Again, Jesus said, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Happy, blessed, joyous. Whenever you've done something for someone else without any thought of return, has that not been one of your happiest moments? Whenever you sent a gift to somebody, no matter how simple, even a cutting from a house plant. Weren't you happy at the thought of the joy which would be in that gift for the person? There is no greater happiness than giving, giving love, giving of yourself. It is one of God's principles of this universe, the very axis of reality that to help others will make you happy. And the more you help others, the more you love others, the more you love God and people, the happier, in turn, you will become. Time after time, you read in the scriptures the word rejoice. To rejoice is to be more than happy. It is to be so joyful that the individual wants to shout and sing. It is written, rejoice in God always, and again I say rejoice. Those are exuberant words, full of joy. You might suppose they were written by someone who was having a wonderful time, who had all his heart desired, who didn't know what cold and bare surroundings meant, who lived a life of movement and change and happiness. The words were, rejoice in God, and again I say rejoice. But that sentence was written by Paul. Do you know where he was when he wrote them? He was in prison. In prison not because he had committed a crime, but simply because he was a follower of the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. Yet even in the drabness, the monotony, the seeming hopelessness of that situation in prison, he was so full of the abounding, abiding joy of being one with God spiritually that he wrote, Rejoice, and again I say rejoice in God always. It is by living a God-centered life, assisting in the construction of the kingdom of God on earth, that you begin to find the way to genuine, authentic happiness and meaning. You may at times have felt tired, discouraged, but if you would but understand that the Spirit of God indwells your mind, not that God is a cosmic exile somewhere out in the sky, but that God's Spirit is within you, a tremendously happy life can begin in that realization. And it can begin not at some future point, but this very instant, as you begin to work in cooperation, in synchrony and harmony with the Spirit of God, God's will and plan and purpose for the living of your life. Jesus of Nazareth well knew the power of the presence of God within. He declared, the kingdom of God is within you. A kingdom is a realm of power. The answer to your spiritual search is within you. 
You remember the story of the boy who searched the bluebird of happiness all over the world, only to find it eventually singing in his own backyard that it had been there all the while? Happiness, too, lies not in outward circumstances, but within yourself. No outward circumstances can make you permanently happy unless you have become at one with the spirit within. Recall the old folk story about the unhappy king who heard that the happiest man in his entire kingdom lived in a far distant province. The king was told the secret of this man's happiness lay in the man's shirt. So the king dispatched a messenger to the happy man to buy his shirt of happiness at any price whatever. Money was no object so that the king himself might be happy once again. When the messenger arrived at this reputed man's house, he found him joking, laughing, full of life. The messenger asked the man to sell his shirt to the king. The man threw back his head and roared with laughter. He took off his threadbare cloak, and underneath, behold, he had no shirt. Discover the beauty in common things. That happiness is not external, it is internal in origin. It is of the inner life. Learn to be hopeful and happy. The kingdom of God is within you. You are loved by God, and that love, that forgiveness, that newness and joy is the supreme delight of life. The God who touches the earth with beauty can make life beautiful for you. The very God who makes waves of the lake to dance in the sunshine can make you glad and free inwardly if you will permit God by your living faith to accept this love. All of the beauty of this earth is yours because it was first God's, because God gave it. Never grieve that no beauty is in your life as long as your eyes behold the simplest wildflower, the setting of the sun, the innocent beauty of a baby. Beauty is a gift of God. Thank God for your very ability to appreciate beauty, the fact that you have eyes with which you can see and ears to hear, and five senses with which you can perceive. Sticks and stones do not have the ability to perceive these things, but you have been given all this as a gift of God because God loves you and loves you infinitely. You are a son or daughter of God, regardless of your racial background, the dialect your parents or grandparents spoke and where they came from on this planet. You are of value, regardless of whether or not you're on the social register, how much money you make, how much education, or how little you've had. You are valuable because you are loved by God. And so with God's happiness for you, happiness is simply the joy of being alive, loving and being loved, and that is its very nature. That is its source. The most intriguing thing about true happiness is that you can give it to others and yet retain it. As Emerson wrote, happiness is a perfume. You cannot pour it on others without getting a few drops on yourself. God's spirit, God's happiness within will grant to you the hope, the courage, and strength to declare to any drabness or monotony or darkness of life, do the worst to me that you dare, but God is within me. You cannot and will not defeat me. For the spirit of God within you is greater than any circumstance which you will ever confront. You are a son or daughter of the living and most high God. And begin thinking about God. Meditate on God. God can give you the power thus to overcome. By faith in God, you can become so happy it will seem your very life had been set to music. And what a tremendous happiness there is in knowing and feeling that God loves you, that God wants you to be happy. God wants your life to be good. God, the very creator of all beauty, truth, and goodness, and happiness holds this out to you for the taking by faith and love. This cannot be bought with gold, for this is far greater than gold. Treasure it spiritually, said Jesus. Lay not up treasure on earth where moth and rust corrupt, but lay up your treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. Where your treasure is, said Jesus, there will your heart be also. With your eyes thus opened to God's beauty, with every day a revelation of it, can you ever again be in a rut? With your heart attuned to God's love, can you ever again doubt his plan for you? Your future stretches on and on along the endless road of time toward eternity. 
Dr. William C. Menninger, the famed psychiatrist of Topeka, Kansas, has suggested the following practice, I quote, set aside a little time, at least once a year, to decide where you're going. What are your priorities, ambitions, aspirations, not just in your business alone, but also in the personal things of life? Your free evenings, your own feelings of status, worthwhileness in life, your own integrity. And as another psychiatrist once said of prayer, man's alternative is to look up or crack up, to begin to have a transcendent philosophy on life and discover spiritual power or to face the stark brink of emotional downfall. There was a certain businessman, head of a large corporation, trembling on the verge of a nervous breakdown. He had a beautiful home replete with comforts and luxuries out in the country district, but he could not seem to find himself at rest. Continually, he was agitated. His mind seemed in perpetual motion. At last, he visited a famous psychiatrist. In the quietness of the physician's consulting room, the doctor said, you're going to have to leave the city. Go to the country. But I live in the country. The man replied, there are miles and miles of woodlands and hills and grass and clean air all around where I live. The doctor said, well, then you'll have to have ease and comfort. I'm surrounded with that in my home. He said, I have servants. Well, then get some relaxation, said the doctor. Go to concerts, go to theaters, the movies. The man replied, I've got tickets for everything. I've been so often I've grown weary of all that. A strange quietness filled the office, and then the doctor looked at the man and said, you've come to the wrong position. It is peace of soul that you require, and medical science cannot give you that. Said Jesus, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world, but lose his own soul? Come to me, he said, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My peace I give to you, the peace and the joy of living as the son or daughter of God by faith. You were born and created to be, finding why you're really alive, that God has a plan and purpose for you, and loving God and loving people. And that is a transformative experience. And then write to us, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. The mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. We want to hear from you. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer. All this literature, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation. When you write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address, Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.